They're down 4-2. Got to overcome a deficit. Uh, Paula, they serious uh, fall off there in that second period. I, I'm mystified, Rush. I, you know, I'm supposed to do game analysis, and I, I have none for you. Well, I, I really don't. I, you know, it's obvious to see what's not there, but as to why it's not there, and it was there yesterday and in the preseason game, I can't tell you. That was a really poor period of hockey. Eve Carter out there to start this sec this uh, third period. Fire. First time they have trailed going into a period this season. Carter shoved off the play by Bob Berg. Steve Carter turning, sending it into the zone. St. Pierre holding it for Cam Plant. Plant played with his coach, Brian Wells, for Bill McDonald back in the 91-92 season in Thunder Bay Colonial League. Here's Dave Shute, acquired last year from San Antonio. Tried to get it to Anton Kutteroff. Shute sends it to the corner. And McCourt for Fort Worth. He goes down. Trevor Job, no whistle. In fact, the referee Cam is Plan. shaking his head. <laughs> Hansen said, no way. Here is Job. Job into the center ice. Nice move. Fed, fed uh, Allen there who had a chance. And Jeff Pollock to Wichita. Just missed Dave Shute with that pass. No icing. It went through the crease. Now Strohack for the fire. 18.35 to go in the third period. There's a stick down. This has been replaced. Bobby Cunningham shoots. That's deflected up and out of play. Richard Dirt is I said, Richard, you had a chance to talk with Bill McDonald between periods. Well, I certainly did. And somebody that's not mystified by that second period is Bill McDonald. Very calm, said, hey, our forwards are tired. Defense isn't playing too badly. He likes the goaltending that's going on for the Fort Worth Fire. But the forwards are tired. Back-to-back -back games, that's what happens, especially when the game starts physical like he did in the first period. He says if we can be patient, calm ourselves down, and get a goal early, we should be all right. By the way, Terry Menard, an update there. It's a little bit worse than we thought. Plastic surgery will be needed at the hospital. Luckily, though, his eye is not affected. No blindness there. The eye will be fine, but the cut severe enough to warrant plastic surgery. Guys, he was cut with a skate in the first period. And Coach McDonald talking about his forwards being tired. That's one of the reasons. They've been a, a man down. Right, and at some point, too, because of, because of Mullins and his frequent visits to the penalty box. <laughs> Which often can't be avoided, I understand. Nothing like last night, however. You know, I, got, I, I, I hate to say this, and like we'll knock some wood here for the fire, but, you know, it seems just like the Fort Worth fire of his luck that he doesn't just get a little superficial wound that can be cut, it's, uh, that can be sewn up here. It's something he has to go to the hospital. He has to have plastic surgery on the spot, you know? That is very much standard Fort Worth fire misfortune. Yeah. Black to take the face off for Wichita. Now he will be sent out, replaced by Allen. These new face-off rules, you're not supposed to do that. <laughs> you, you've got to stay behind those lines. Bobby Cunningham taking it for Fort Worth, and he wins it back. Hogg tried to get it over to Strohak. Strohak wasn't there. Wichita able to get it out of the zone. Caruso, now Hogg. Murray Hogg dumping it across. Taken by Fitzpatrick. Now Dave Shute into the fire zone with it. Trying to feed Allen. Knocked away by Cunningham. Here's Jamie Allen. He'll push it around the side boards. Cameron, and he took a hit up high. Shoot with a shot. I sure do hate to use those two together, you know. When yeah. Shoot. Hello. Clint Black just decked by Mark Strohack, the Husker Hawk, to the neutral ice with it. Both teams will get line changes here. Cameron looking for that puck from Delormere. Now he will get off as well, finish out that fire chain. McGeegan feeding Devono to the puck. Fetter off there. Three Wichita Thunder skaters. Now Dwight Mullins arrives. Couldn't do anything there. It's Bob Berg out of there with it. Normally Dwight Mullins goes into that corner with a more thunderous approach. But Mullins has got the puck himself. Joe pokes it away to the corner. McGeegan sending it behind the net. 
O'Donnell, one-time shot, Ray deflection in front. Mullins put it wide. Back out, Ray takes it just across the blue line. Here's that new offside rule. You, have, you can't just dump it back in. They had to wait for it. And a turnover. Joe fires, deflected. Berg puts it home. 5-2 Wichita. There was no way. I mean, no way he could have missed that shot. The, the warmer just didn't have a chance. It was just sprawled out. And no, no time to get back over to the left side of the net after just finishing covering the right. Give and go. Uh, Richard, you can tell it's probably better. You, you're you right there. Well, De Delormier makes the save, but the deflection just comes right to the Wichita player. And, hey, when things are going right, they're going right. And absolutely nothing that the Fort Worth netminder Delormier could do about that one. What, what can you say? 5-2 Wichita. The first goal was important in this period for the Fort Worth Fire. Wichita takes that team away from them. And now a three-goal lead, a lot tougher to come back from than a two-goal lead. The Fire needs something, and they need it in a hurry. They got a heavy check there from Steve Carter, but he's going to get penalized. Had that elbow up high. And this may not be Delormier. Uh, or rather, uh, Carter. Because Johnson, Neil Johnson, is the one in the box. And uh, maybe he retaliated for that check. They have the Fort Worth box door open as well. Let's see what we can pick up on the replay, Paul. Oh, friendly. I don't know that it was necessarily that. Uh, Two minutes showing for each player. So Johnson in the box. The Fort Worth box door open. Nobody in there yet. And uh, Steve Carter skating around. Burn Ray over there now. And are they going to suggest that something happened on the bench over there? I don't know. That, because Carter was the one that applied the check, and it, it looked like a clean check on our replay. In any case, it's four on four. We're getting the penalty announcement now. the call on Johnson. They announced the penalty as being on Allen. It's actually Johnson in the box. You know what? They, they call a bench minor against the Fort Worth Fire, but yet they don't identify what sort of bench minor it is. Is it too many men on the ice? Is it what? Uh, we're we're going to guess it was something having to do with the Wichita player colliding into the uh, into the bench, but uh, maybe a little. Uh, yeah. I'll tell you a funny story about that sort of situation next uh, next time we have a break. Brian Black O'Donnell pushing Ooh. shoot to the ice. Black. A heavy collision over there with Anton Fedorov. Puck all the way around. Painter going to try to hold it in. He does. Glenn Painter pinching deep in. Shoot! It hit the post. And the fire. Again, can't buy a break. Painter got in deep. Plant centering and O'Donnell had skated back to cut that off. Now Painter. Two on one chance for the fire if they hurry. Painter, he shoots, rebound, kicked out past McCourt. Those were the two fire defensemen, so Wichita back with a two on one. O'Donnell, the only one back, shot by Black and glove saved to Delormier. He catches right handed, and that's where Black tried to go. He hauled it in. Paula, your score. It was a, a, a Stars game a couple seasons ago. Shane Sherla, the same sort of situation happened. And there's a bit of a brawl at the bench. And Shane Shirley's not on the ice, and he was the Stars Tough guy at the time. And, you know, he just couldn't hold himself back. So he takes a water bottle, and the, the, the player on the opposing team's head is right at the edge of the bench. And he 
he fakes this water bottle and squirts the guy in the face with his very, you know, nonchalantly as if, you know, nobody caught him, but it was very, very funny. Anton Fedorov shot it wide, the brother of NHLer Sergei Fedorov. 33 seconds left on the coincidental minor. Meyer has 15 minutes to make up a three-goal deficit. We saw Brian Wells there just a little earlier. Played on championship teams for Bill McDonald, also in Wichita. And as he told us at the interview, he went into coaching and kind of always wanted to do it and said, hey, you know, how many more can I, can I really win as a player? What are my goals? He redefined them. Go ahead, Richard. Just want to say, Delormier really has not played badly in this game. I know you look up at the scoreboard, you see five goals for Wichita, and you think maybe they should be bringing in Plouf. But I think maybe one goal Delormier should have had. The rest, really, uh, the defense wasn't back in time. Some two-on-ones, he had to cover one and not the other. And some deflections, he got screened a couple of times. I think if he's going to take some positives out of this thing, and I know with 14 minutes plus left, it may be early to be talking about it. But nonetheless, in a 5-2 game, goaltending this year for a Fort Worth Fire should be pretty good. You've got Plouffe, Delormier has played well. Also, the center position with Black and Cunningham, two new guys, really a lot of Tainer in there, too. A lot of new faces, and defensively, you've got to be pretty pleased goaltending-wise with this team. If they can score some more goals, they may be all right. Strohak, who just threw that huge hit down at the other end with the puck. He finds Vern Ray just out of the box. Ray shoots, and they're going to call this play offside. Mullins was on the other side of the ice and into the zone too early. 5-2 Wichita. I hope that isn't a little comment on Vern skating. Was that a little shot? That was not at all. Not at all. Oh, okay. Merely a comment on the uh, speed with which Mullins approached the blue line. Neither of them are exactly... You know, Froners. like these speed kind of guys. They're, yeah. not, they're not Dave Shute. But they have uh, other skills. You don't want all all Dave Shutes on your team. Although a few of them are, are not a bad thing Always to have. handy. LaRock tried to get it back to Ryan Black. Stefan LaRock taking it away from Pollock. And... Uh, Black got that elbow up. Fedorov didn't like that much. Funk chasing after it. Carter with him. There's a little of that clutching and grabbing going on from both teams. And that was called a lot more last night. Yeah, definitely. They have really let him play tonight. Pollock spins it into the zone. The Lormier holding for Carter. 13 and a half to play, third period. Off Johnston skate. He was headed for the bench. Didn't want to play the puck. Caruso drops it in. This is a delayed offside. Would not have been last year. Fire can't. And once Mullins went back in the zone, it was called. That is a, a difference in the rule last year and, and it uh, from last year. And of course, many couple decades ago, that was the rule and had been. They changed it to the tag-up rule. They eliminate that this year. And frankly, I think that had something to do with the Wichita goal. The fire, with the last Wichita goal, the fire had been out there a long shift. They, uh, they, it came out of the zone. You might have wanted to just dump it back in and get a line change. Last year, you could have done that. This year, you couldn't. There ended up being a turnover in the neutral zone, and Job fed Berg for the goal. Thunder controlling out of the draw. David shoots backhand goal. Five hole and Delormier couldn't stop it. Shoot, that's a tough shot. He had it on his forehand, switched it back to the backhand very quickly. Richard, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you saw in that shot? I think you probably I think it went it went five hole, am I right? No, actually it didn't even do that. It curled inside the right post before oh. Delormier could get over there. You'll see he's not even over there in time. And uh, I Really, that's a case where Delormier should have been there. The pad was just late, the skate of his right leg getting there, and it looked like it slipped just to the right of his pad. It may have gone under just slightly, but nonetheless, shoot with a pretty good move. Delormier, though, I think knows he should have had that one. Bill McDonald is going to use his timeout here with 13.06 to go in the third period. You know, here's my question. Wichita played last night, too. You know, I mean, I don't... 
I don't understand why that's a valid excuse to say our guys are tired because the other team's guys should be equally as tired, am I right? And plus, Fort Worth didn't have to travel anywhere. So, I don't know. I mean, what do you think, Russ? Do you think that's On the other hand, the Wichita game was over early last night. It was 4 nothing in the first 10 minutes, and Fort Worth, while they won by three goals, it was a, it was a one-goal game into most of the third period, and it was a rather physical game. There yeah. was a lot of energy extended in ways other than skating and shooting uh, and checking. What would you be implying there, Russ? I'd what else is left? I'd be implying that uh, <laughs> that they spent a lot of time after the clock had stopped temporarily uh, continuing to play. And so Fort Worth, definitely a physical game last night, and uh, I can understand why they might be a little fatigued. Wichita playing a team that in Tulsa that traditionally not anywhere near as physical as San Antonio. Richard. Yeah, I just wanted to mention the fact that I, in talking to Bill McDonald, I don't think he was using it as an excuse to some extent because he said, yeah, two games in a row, and he looks at me and says, but I guess Wichita's done that too. And that's true, but has Wichita lost a couple of forwards that the Fort Worth Fire had? I don't think they, you know, Menard's in the hospital. That's uh, one less less player they can work with although uh, mcdonald did say this it is kind of nice that they have that game tuesday night at home they can go home and rest no travel no nothing regroup and come out strong against oak city tuesday night and that of course as you mentioned the downside to that game they've got to play oklahoma city quick shot knocked wide pollock holding it in Vern ray playing it out to malcolm cameron Bobby Cunningham working for the fire. Put it to Fitzpatrick's leg. Cunningham back. Cameron's got it. Trying to send off Neil Johnson. Cunningham also after it. And Cunningham and Fitzpatrick are going to go. And it looked to me like Cunningham threw the first punch. And a Richard, did you, did you see what mitigated that? Sure did see Cunningham start that one. I, I really think like so he, too. he came in and just uh, nailed Fitzpatrick, and they go at it. I gotta say, you were here last night, Russ. The quality of fighting tonight a little slack. Let's let's <laughs> let's just be quite honest. They've gotten in a couple of little uh, tussles, but the officials have broken them off. No serious punches going on, and I think Cunningham maybe to himself realizing that he's got a cheap one in there. Here's the replay. Both sort of fighting with the sticks. The sticks aren't high. Everything's legal right here. But there, that's not legal. You Hello. can't do that. And I think Cunningham a little frustrated. Got a good punch in. Fitzpatrick wasn't going to take that. But broke Boy. it up before we could ring the bell and do all that good stuff. So Something must have happened further up the ice. You've got to think. Otherwise, otherwise, that looks completely unprovoked. Now, it sort of reminds you of the, the Allen matchup tonight. Allen for the Wichita Thunder and Dwight Mullen for the Fort Worth Fire. They've been going at it tonight, too. This thing could be building right now until the third period between those two also. Cunningham probably lucky not to get an instigating there. Probably. Instead, coincidental major to Jay Fitzpatrick and Bobby Cunningham. Puck out to Bird. He's leveled by Carter. Quick shot way wide by O'Donnell. Five on five with the coincidental major. McCourt keeping it ahead to Caruso. Knocked back in by Bird. McCourt gets it out of the zone. Bird recovers it. This will be offside if Wichita comes back in. So the fire will set up. Carter deflected it off Caruso's skate. LaRock somehow got that puck. And he lost it off his stick, trying to bring it back for the stop. Funk off Bird's skate, kicking it into the zone. Hog after it. Fire come back. McCourt. Mike McCourt taken away there by Ryan Phillips. Now plant up to Job. He couldn't touch it. That would have been a two-line pass. Instead, it will be icing if the fire touches first. And Phillips did touch it. Hit off his skate. So we continue play. Now Johnson centering pass. Shot put on by Phillips. So Lorimer able to deny that one. Pollock setting the neutral ice. Now Mullen. Black skating with him. Mullen shot glove save and St. Pierre covers the rebound. I like how Black went in and crashed the net regardless. He was 
there for any possible rebounds. So something that a lot of times overlooked is very important. And uh, I think maybe the fire could have been doing a little more of that tonight. St. Pierre played 14 games last year, 6-5-1, and one, a 4-5-4 four, four goals against average. And also 18 penalty minutes for a goalie, which in 14 games is, I'd say, a significant amount. And he was installed as the number one guy this year, backed up by Brian Langlock. As opposed to Phil Gronovell, who was in camp with him this year, now playing in France. You know, and offside the call. I would, you know, this is going to, I'm going to, I'll be interested to talk to the players after the game tonight because at right about this point, if I'm a player and I look up at the scoreboard and it's a 6-2, I'm beginning to think, can we just get out of this game and not send Delora Mears goals against average, you know, any higher? You know, I don't know what, you know, what is the mentality of these guys? Do they think they can come back and win it? I wonder. You know, last year I would say 80% of them said they couldn't. This year, That's we don't know. That's supposed to be the difference is the character of the squad. Harry Menard out. Certainly, if you're going to score a lot of goals, you'd like to have him on the ice. Anton Fedorov with the puck for Fort Worth. Now David Shoot. He moves in, fires, and Delormeer covers up. I have a question uh, for Richard concerning Menard. Uh, did they say how many, did Maxis say how many games he would be out? No, he didn't. He just looked at me and said, well, I think it's pretty serious. He showed me where it was cut, and actually what McDonald was telling me was that he was on the ice, hit by a skate, and that the skate cut did actually, if you look at his face, go through his eye in a sense. It went from the top above his eyebrow through his eye on, I want to say his right eye, they were telling me, all the way down. The cut continued down halfway down his face, but he could see. He didn't complain that his eye was hurting. It just was bleeding all over the place. And the fire trainers looked at him and said, man, we can't stitch that up. They sent him to the hospital, and uh, word there is that he's going to actually undergo plastic surgery. But somehow, uh, I don't know how, his eye was saved. The, the, the skate itself just cut all around the eye. But luckily, he says he no vision, no blurring, no nothing, McDonald was saying. He just was cut. Trevor Jobe with the puck. He's working on a two-goal night. Feeding plan back to Joe Gold hat trick for Trevor Joe, and that combination there. I expect we will see work quite a bit for the Wichita this Wichita Thunder team this year. A couple of veterans, very skilled offensively, and Joe burying it for his third goal tonight. Part of the the problem here is the defense isn't getting between their goaltender and their man. They're kind of skating alongside them or behind them. I saw Ryan Black, I think it was, try and get in front of one guy. It's just, they're just, uh, you know, like Richard said, out of sync and, and out of position. And DeLormier, I'm not sure if he could even save that one if he saw it coming. He was pretty far out of his net. Pollock controlling out of the faceoff. Cameron after it. Phillips there. Murray Hogg sends it behind the net. Pollock taking over. Mullins without a helmet. That skipped over Murray Hogg's stick. This will be icing as Strohack touches. Nine and a half to play. 7-2 here. Wichita Thunder. If you're Brian Wells, you've got to be happy with the way this team has bounced back from a tough loss last night in Tulsa. And I'm sure that was their goal. You know, I'm sure that's exactly what they had in mind was bouncing back today. And, uh, you know, you get that nice long bus ride. I really, I'm, I'm impressed with this team, and, and they look to me as good as they did on paper. I now I want to see Tulsa. That's Absolutely. what I want to see if, if Tulsa pummeled these guys last night. Well, and Tulsa got on them early, and, and Wells is telling us, hey, after that, you know, it was, it was close. But Tulsa with some, some players this year. Doug Warren back with Tulsa. Craig Cox, the former NHLer, back with the Oilers. And uh, also... Luke Beausoleil, supposed to be with them at some point. Did you catch Ryan Phillips pass between his legs backwards? Very That's nice. pretty impressive. Boxing in by 
Sherlock, which will be icing. He will go ice side to Richard Durris. Interesting situation involving <laughs> the net miner for the Fort Worth Fire, Delormere. And Delormere sitting there, and, and the puck and, and a couple of guys skating toward him. In fact, Ryan Phillips in the Wichita Thunder right in the crease. And Delormere just holding. I mean, punching him, holding him, not letting him go anywhere. Hansen sitting right there watching him. And you could tell Hansen had the whistle in his mouth, was going to wait one more second and then blow it. And I think if this wasn't a 7-2 game, that's immediately called and, and there's a penalty. But in a 7-2 game, I think the officials were ready like the rest of us to go ahead and get the game over with. But it's just funny to see the frustration of DeLore. I mean, he did not want to let Phillips go anywhere and finally did when he knew the official was watching. Hansen has called a fairly loose game tonight. And now certainly will uh, be inclined to follow his whistle even more, as you alluded to, Richard. Cam Plant with the puck for Wichita. Good night for him. There's Jamie Allen and David Shute. He makes up ground in a hurry. Sends it across. Allen fires high. Puck is behind the net. Vern Ray. Won it out along the boards, but it skips over LaRock's stick. Better off fielded it. Now Allen sends it across. Black there for Wichita along with Painter for Fort Worth. Here's, here's Mark O'Donnell. Nowhere to go for Fort Worth. Clintois takes over for Wichita or for the Thunder. Painter sending it across off the board. Phillips. Again, Painter had to wait there for his mates to clear the zone. And then he passed it to O'Donnell, who didn't know the pass was coming, and you know, and it goes nowhere. Here's McCourt for Fort Worth. Away from him. He plays it up along the boards. Johnson. Bono, who took a hit. Behind the net, Mike McCourt for Fort Worth. Here's Malcolm Cameron. McCourt feeding Cameron again. Knocked away by Shoot. All the way across, Berg fires, pad save, put back on net by Johnson. Now all the way across, Pollock's going to set one up. He whiffed on it. Carter got a stick on it, pushing Johnson against the board. Now over for Johnson. He centers, knocked out. Out of the zone by Fort Worth. This will be icing, but it won't get to the red line. McGeegan for checking. Fedorov turns around. That one deflected off Strohak's stick. No icing. The Lorimer out to play it. His pass was deflected. Now Strohak could not get it out of the zone. Mark Funk for Wichita. Around behind the net. Cleared out by O'Donnell. Here's McGeegan. McGeegan, he fires one. Knocked off course by St. Pierre. Here's Plant. Trevor Joe. Hat trick man tonight. Slap shot blocked by Strohak. Job's got it back. It's going to pass blindly in front of the net. O'Donnell working along with Pollock. O'Donnell comes out of there with it. Lobs it. And that puck gets to a halt again, just short of the icing line. Burr. All the way across for Cam Plant. Plant looking for Job. And again, looks like Job might have, might have taken that play off, which you get to do when you have a hat trick and a 7-2 lead and you're the all-time leading scorer in the Coast League. Now Job's got it back. Good set up behind the net. He's got Allen, feeds Allen. Shot, goal! Put that to a little bitty hole. I need to see the replay on that one, Russ. I did miss it. There was not a lot of room there, and we'll go down to Richard Dirt in just a second, get his take on this. It was Job setting up Gretzky style behind the net, and Hansen right in front of our view there. Wait. Richard, what did you see? Uh, Paula mentioned that she didn't see it well. Delormier didn't see it either until it was in the net, and that was obviously the problem there, but Let's give Allen a little credit there. He somehow found the hole created by the gloved hand of Delormier and the inner body. So just that hole created there, it, you normally call it a five hole, but it's a hole nonetheless. He wasn't completely against his body. It somehow got right through there. I have no idea how he did that, but when things are going right, they're going right. And when things are going bad for your goaltender, you can't even buy a break. So 
eight would be the score, but Columbia, I think, surprised Allen took a shot short side like that with pinpoint accuracy, but it worked for him. Set her off with the push. Phillips, Cameron taking it away. The effort level of Malcolm Cameron tonight, Paula, has not waned with the score. Never. He's that, that's why he's still on this team. He's that kind of guy all around. He's got nice foot speed, look and at, he's a grinder. Look at this line Bill McDonald's put out there now. Cameron centering for Caruso, who's got the puck now, <laughs> and Mullen. That's Caruso sends it on net. That's the hardest working line in hockey, probably. This will not be icing. Delormere stopped it. Perhaps headed to the crease. Now Carter's got it. Line changes for both sides. 4.30 to play in the game. Off the back of St. Pierre's net. Fitzpatrick sends it up and out of the zone. Delormere sends it across. McCourt. up by LaRock. Call it for Wichita. Cam Plant now. Clark Funk taking off his skates and Carter's got it for Fort Worth playing on the blue line with Strohack and Mark Strohack up to play that puck. Jobe not offside. He was in the zone when that puck came in. Now Cunningham looking for LaRock. Black on the ice as well for Fort Worth. Funk turning, feeding Job. He's got Berg with him. Job lost it in the slot. Drops it back. Pollock a shot. And Delore Mir catches it. Richard Durek. Well, I want to say, I, I think that something Paula alluded to was the character of this team. Well, the line that was just out there was really fighting and scrapping. It's an 8-2 to two game. It is over. It's been over. But the Fort Worth Fire aren't giving up. Quite frankly, they're being outplayed. They do look a little tired. And they don't look tired enough to go at it down here. And look at this. I think I got a third man in there. Is that right? Did you just see that? Possibly. Yes. Caruso is tied up with Dazdal at the benches. And here we go. And that's LaRock. And we'll have to sort that out. And I can't even see the jersey from here, but LaRock. Wichita jerseys are hard to read anyway, and especially when they're pulled up almost over his head. And, and look at him skating around. And this Maybe fight, Johnson. This fight started on the other side of the ice. And I tell you what, right now, LaRock's losing. Well, LaRock, it, it's and clear he's that tied up. Yeah, I mean, he, they got his arm tied up. In fact, he's stuck in. It's number four for Bob Wichita. Bob Berg. Bob Berg. 127 Berg, going to the class. Berg waiting for LaRock. LaRock's got his fist, but he can't do anything with it because he's stuck. He's tangled up in his jersey and Wichita's jersey, and he still's not. He still can't get loose. So, boy, you got to feel for LaRock. It's not his fault. He's just tangled up. And I continue with my theme of the night, which is slacker fights. <laughs> and this is yet another one. These two teams just skating around these two guys and a couple of punches from Berg, but that's not really fair. With the exception of the ones that Paul Jackson was involved in last night, Richard, <laughs> I assure you the fighting... The quality of the fighting was, was superior. But certainly the amount of equipment on the ice, not slacker at all. And no, this, this actually nearly stacks up with what we had last night at about this time uh, in the opposite corner. Brian Caruso right now sitting in the penalty box for uh, the Fort Worth Fire, a man that Bill McDonald said he thought would be fighting more this year in the absence of fan favorite and fighter Trevor Convert, yeah. who didn't let anybody get in a punch on him, I think, for the first eight fights he had or something like that. So uh, he just, McDonald described Brian Caruso aptly as a house. He said the man is a house. So I, I thought that was that was kind of a compliment. He said he was just just built and that he didn't have a much fat on him at all, just, just, a, just a house. Dwight Mullins is standing outside the referee's crease waiting for the info. Now, he's the fire captain. So he's the guy that gets the interpretation. I think he's just standing there because he, he didn't get a piece of that, and he's not too happy about it. He wanted some of that action. Eight to two game. No sense spinning it out there on the ice when there's a nice warm penalty box over there. Trevor Job. Also getting the interpretation for Wichita. There's the fire bench. And Bill McDonald, that is a scowl, Paula. That is a scowl. That <laughs> is a scowl. There's That's Brian it. Wells, more of a smirk. Go ahead, Richard. 
Well, I just wanted to say Bob Bird pretty pleased with himself. I think with about you know three minutes left in the game, he gets to go to the showers a little bit early, and he he came out and sort of looked at me and winked. I think it was sort of mostly that he hey he won the fight. He may be going to the locker room, but I think he was trying to say he won the fight. But what Bird doesn't know is. He never got a punch off because LaRock was stuck within his own jersey. You should have seen this. I, it was right against the glass. Not only was he tangled up in his own jersey, was LaRock, but then the other fist was stuffed in the jersey of Bird, and he couldn't get his hands loose. So wherever Bird went, LaRock had to go. It was sort of comical. And meanwhile, Bird's got one arm free, and he's just punching his lights out. So, yeah, Bird won the fight, but I, I wouldn't call that a fair fight. We didn't have the gloves come off, and they backed away from each other. They just sort of skated around while Bird brought LaRock with him and punched him a couple of times. Is that a fight, guys? I don't think so. You know, we is, is need Richard for color commentary, and that is really what he provides. Right there. Good color. Well, it's just, you know, it, it almost makes me want to just take my gloves off, take my coat and tie off, go out on the ice and show these guys how to fight correctly. You don't have gloves. <laughs> I, I, Don't I make may. me come down there, Richard. Yeah, and if you come down here, I will have gloves, okay. let me assure you. <laughs> That'll be enough of that. Corey Dosdall, by the way, is going to get a two-minute roughing minor as well, so the Fire will have a power play. And for Fort Worth, the, uh, they have not been able to crack Kevin St. Pierre tonight, and I think they might be a little surprised at that. He did not have a strong game last night and has only let in two shots tonight. And that's Corey Dosdall. Hi, Mom. How are you doing? <laughs> He's a bit jovial for a guy that just went up against the house. <laughs> you know, I don't think his mom lives in Fort Worth. I don't think she's <laughs> going to be getting the message. No, Corey Dosdall... Played last Regina year for Saskatchewan. Regina, Saskatchewan. So she would, she can order a tape though if she wants. There Eight you seven go. one six one four eight. I think we should send Mrs. her one. For Mrs. Dosdall, get a chance for her to see her son on television. Anyway, his two-minute minor penalty puts his team a man down. They are, however, six goals ahead on the scoreboard, so they will content themselves with that advantage. Steve Carter. Fort Worth, along with McCourt, they will run the blue line. Black, O'Donnell, and Cameron up front. This is Malcolm Cameron. Right side. O'Donnell. Back to Carter. Cameron went down. Mark O'Donnell. And Fedorov. We have a whistle and the puck frozen. So Mark O'Donnell will be unless something changes in the next three minutes, shut out tonight for the first time. He had goals, a couple of goals and an assist in that exhibition game. Had two goals last night. But yeah, he's someone Bill McDonald said he was really excited about getting, that he didn't quite know what he, what he got, and he basically got a big scorer. And, I mean, you'll see him kind of kind of just push guys off him when, when he's moving in on the puck, and... Scores. That's Ryan Black with his first of the season. And I have to tell you, he deserves it. He's been working hard enough along the corners, in the corners, and uh, along the boards and in front of the net. He had that one coming. Thank you. He's basically with an open net there. Not happy with himself. He went down too early. Black putting it by him. Ryan Black played this St. Thomas University in Canada last year. And scored well there, almost two points a game, 41 points in 22 games. So Fort Worth hoping he will add some offense to the mix. No offside. Cameron with a shot. St. Pierre just did save it. That was headed by the hole before he blocked it off. Richard? I just wanted to say, St. Pierre, the, the guy most upset on Wichita Thunder about that last goal. Sure, it doesn't have an effect on the game, but he had played so well the last two periods, hadn't allowed a goal, and he just missed getting his stick on the puck. I think that's what frustrated him. He looked like he was going to make a good play, didn't. Wide open net, easy goal for Black to make. But Paul is right. If anyone deserves it, it's Black. They have fought hard, given Fort Worth Fire a little bit of credit here defensively. They've tried to do the best they can. I think fatigue 
and maybe some positioning problems here in the third have really killed them. And quite frankly, they've been outplayed. That's the bottom line. Wichita has earned this victory. The fire haven't given it to them. Puck sent in front. That's Funk that got a shot way up high. Ryan Phillips for Wichita. That one knocked in the air and scooped up on the short hop by Delora Mears. 2.18 to go in the game. Fire will bring Mullen's line back out again. This time he'll play with Cunningham and McGeegan. And Fort Worth has had to shuffle their lines up tonight with Menard out and and, and uh, that is, has hurt them. Yeah, definitely. I mean, when things don't work and it's this early in the season, there's no reason not to shuffle your lines because things aren't set. But, you know, sometimes it's just that and worse, basically. And I don't know. Like I said, I'll be interested to talk to Bo McDonald after this game and the players and see what, what they, you know, what if they're willing to say it's just because they're tired. That would have been icing, but Mullins hustled after it. Bobby Cunningham battling for it. Mullins doing the split. Finally, the whistle blew as he was tied up with Jeff Pollock. Dwight Mullins, a guy the fire were very pleased to have back. And by the way, we want you to watch watch out for Dwight Mullins. Commercials starring him begin airing this week. All right. You know, he is the captain of the Fort Worth Fire this year. He's a guy who has enough heart for probably both teams out here on the ice tonight. And Richard Duras has a comment, I'm guessing, on the commercial. <laughs> you judge correctly. I had a chance to see the football game yesterday, and if you watched the game today, you saw Rush and Dwight Mullins in the commercial today. And Let me tell you what, first of all, are you okay? Because that looked like a vicious check against the board. He, uh, actually, to be honest with you, Richard, I, I expected acting, and I really didn't get it. Um, <laughs> there, there was... There was a, a trifle of, of soreness there, but I, I, you know, I put up with it, obviously, for the sake of the commercial. And, and he was talking about the fact that the penalty box or that area was his neighborhood, am I right? <laughs> well, <laughs> that would be correct and accurate, I well, might add. Well, what's the deal? Is he not Mr. Rogers? Did he not let you in his neighborhood? I was pretty frustrated. I mean, he opens the door and says, this is my neighborhood, and closes the door. Richard, I, I wanted to go in. I played it smart for community cable. I let him hit me, and I didn't retaliate, so we got a power play out of it. I, know I want you to know, had I not been sick that day, I was going to take care of, of Lully when he dumped my partner, Rush. Well, actually, what I wanted to happen in the commercial, and it's a shame it didn't, I wanted Rush to have yep. ice, and there's a nice warm penalty box over there. Trevor Job also getting the interpretation for Wichita. There's the fire bench. And Bill McDonald, that is a scowl, Paula. That is a scowl. <laughs> that is a scowl. There's that Brian Wells, more of a smirk. Go ahead, Richard. Well, I just wanted to say Bob Burke, pretty pleased with himself. I think with about, you know, three minutes left in the game, he gets to go to the showers a little bit early, <laughs> and he, he came out, sort of looked at me and winked, I think. He was sort of motioning that he, hey, he won the fight. He may be going to the locker room, but I think he was trying to say he won the fight. But what Berg doesn't know is he never got a punch off because LaRock was stuck within his own jersey. You should have seen this. I, it was right against the glass. Not only was he tangled up in his own jersey was LaRock, but then the other fist was stuffed in the jersey of Berg, and he couldn't get his hands loose. So wherever Berg went, LaRock had to go. It was sort of comical. <laughs> Meanwhile, Berg's got one arm free, and he's just punching his lights out. So, yeah, Berg won the fight, but... I wouldn't call that a fair fight. We didn't have the gloves come off, and they backed away from each other. They just sort of skated around while Berg brought LaRock with him and punched him a couple of times. <laughs> Is that a fight, guys? I don't think so. You know, we Is need Richard for color commentary, and that is really what he provides. Right there. Good color. Well, it's just, you know, it, it almost makes me want to just take my gloves off, take my coat and tie off, go out on the ice and show these guys how to fight correctly. You don't have gloves. <laughs> I, Don't I make may. me come down there, Richard. Yeah, and if you come down here, I will have gloves. Okay. Let me assure you. <laughs> That'll be enough of that. Corey Dosdall, by the way, is going to get a two-minute roughing minor as well, so the fire will have a power play. And for Fort Worth, the, uh, they have not been able to crack Kevin St. Pierre tonight, and I think they might be a little surprised at that. He did not have a strong game last night and has only let in two shots tonight. And 
That's Corey Dosdall. Hi, Mom. How are you doing? <laughs> a bit jovial for a guy that just went up against the house. <laughs> you know, I don't think his mom lives in Fort Worth. I don't think she's <laughs> going to be getting the message. No, Corey Dosdall. Played last Regina year for Saskatchewan. Regina, Saskatchewan. So she would, she can order a cake though if she wants. There eight you seven go. one six one four eight. I think we should for send Mrs. her one. Dosdall. Get a chance for her to see her son on television. Anyway, his two-minute minor penalty puts his team a man down. They are, however, six goals ahead on the scoreboard, so they will content themselves with that advantage. McCourt, they will run the blue line. Black, O'Donnell, and Cameron up front. This is Malcolm Cameron. Right side. O'Donnell back to Carter. Cameron went down. Mark O'Donnell and Fedorov. We have a whistle and the puck frozen. So Mark O'Donnell will be unless something changes in the next three minutes. Shut out tonight for the first time. He had goals, a couple of goals and an assist in that exhibition game. Had two goals last night. But yeah, he's someone Joe McDonald said he was really excited about getting, that he didn't quite know what he, what he got, and he basically got a big scorer. And, I mean, you'll see him kind of kind of push guys off him when, when he's moving in on the puck, and that would be a goal. Scores. That's Ryan Black with his first of the season. And I have to tell you, he deserves it. He's been working hard enough along the corners, in the corners, and uh, along the boards and in front of the net. He had that one coming. Thank you. He's basically with an open net there. Not happy with himself. He went down too early. And Black putting it by him. Ryan Black played at St. Thomas University in Canada last year. And scored well there, almost two points a game, 41 points in 22 games. So forward hoping he will add some offense to the mix. No offside. Cameron with a shot. St. Pierre just did save it. That was headed 5-0 before he blocked it off. Richard? I just wanted to say, St. Pierre, the, the guy most upset on Wichita Thunder about that last goal. Sure, it doesn't have an effect on the game, but he had played so well the last two periods, hadn't allowed a goal, and he just missed getting his stick on the puck. I think that's what frustrated him. He looked like he was going to make a good play, didn't. Wide open net, easy goal for Black to make. But Paul is right. If anyone deserves it, it's Black. They have fought hard, given forward fire a little bit of credit here defensively. They've tried to do the best they can. I think fatigue and maybe some positioning problems here in the third have really killed them. And quite frankly, they've been outplayed. That's the bottom line. Wichita has earned this victory. The fire haven't given it to them. Puck sent in front. That's Funk that's got a shot way up high. Ryan Phillips for Wichita. That one knocked in the air and scooped up on the short hop by Delora Mears. 2.18 to go in the game. Fire will bring Mullins' line back out again. This time he'll play with Cunningham and McGeegan. And Fort Worth has had to shuffle their lines up tonight with Menard out and and, and uh, that has, has things, hurt them. Yeah, definitely. I mean, when things don't work and it's this early in the season, there's no reason not to shuffle your lines because things aren't set. But, you know, sometimes it's just that and worse, basically. And I don't know, like I said, I'll be interested, interested to talk to Bo McDonald after this game and the players and see what, what they, you know, what if they're willing to say it's just because they're tired. That would have been icing, but Mullins hustled after it. Bobby Cunningham battling for it. Mullins doing the split. And finally the whistle blew as he was tied up with Jeff Pollock. Dwight Mullins, a guy the fire were very pleased to have back. By the way, we want you to watch watch out for Dwight Mullins. Commercials starring him begin airing this week. All right. You know, he is the captain of the Fort Worth Fire this year. He's a guy who has enough heart for probably both teams out here on the ice tonight. And Richard Durick 
as a comment, I'm guessing on the commercial. <laughs> you guessed correctly. I had a chance to do the football game yesterday, and if you watch the game today, you saw Rush and Dwight Mullins in the commercial today. And let me tell you what, first of all, are you okay? Because that looked like a vicious check against the boards. He, uh, actually, to be honest with you, Richard, I, I expected acting, and I really didn't get it. Um, <laughs> there, there was... There was a, a trifle of soreness there, but I, you know, I put up with it obviously for the sake of the commercial. And, and he was talking about the fact that the penalty box there, that area was his neighborhood. <laughs> am I right? <laughs> well, <laughs> that would be correct and accurate, I well, might add. Well, what's the deal? Is he not Mr. Rogers? Did he not let you in his neighborhood? I was pretty frustrated. I mean, he opens the door and says, "This is my neighborhood," and closes the door. Well, Richard, I, I wanted to go in. I played it smart for community cable. I let him hit me, and I didn't retaliate, so we got a power play out of it. I, know. I want you to know. Had I not been sick that day, I was going to take care of, of Molly when he dumped my partner, Rush. Well, actually, what I wanted to happen in the commercial, and it's a shame it didn't, I wanted Rush to have gloves, stick, and pads. I wanted Dwight to have the same thing. And then the two of them would fight it, and I would call it for the commercial. But unfortunately, that didn't fly. And, and it's really a shame that it didn't. Well, <laughs> the, the commercial had to be 30 seconds, and a fight between Dwight Mullins and myself really wouldn't have taken up anywhere near that no. amount of time. No. Now, now, that's, now, that's an excellent point you make there, but I, I think it is interesting. It was a good commercial, though, i got to admit. R and, Rush, you did a smart thing, too. When he checks you, you smile. That's the way to do it. Give him hell, Rush. Hey, uh, you know, what can I say? Dwight was very gracious taking his time to come out and make commercials for Community Cable. And that, by the way, not the only commercial of that variety you'll see. There is a uh, uh -oh. uh, another one in the works. So once the uh, good folks at Community Cable get that one edited and onto your screen, you can take a look at that as well. We are 60 seconds away from the end of this hockey game. 8-3 the score. Wichita and nearly a goal there by Johnson. Deflected up high by the shoulder of Bob Delormier. And Delormier, it's an 8-3 game, but he really looked sharp early. That first period, he had a terrific period. And uh, really, he has probably let in a couple soft goals, but they really came after the game was, was decided. Cameron sends it around. Pollock. That one hops over the blue line and over the stick of Strohack. He plays it back to, Mar to Murray Hogg. Hogg, this is his first year out of junior, young player. McGeegan, Mullen scores, and St. Pierre is just very upset with himself. And the fire will make this one look a little more respectable with 20 seconds left. But McGeegan, a three-point night for him, and speaking of guys that have worked fairly hard, McGeegan has done his share tonight. Dwight Mullins, of course, I don't know that I've ever watched a hockey game in which he participated, in which he did not work hard. You know, I, I think uh, this is part of Dwight Mullins being the captain. I mean, that's what he has to do. He just sent a message to his whole team saying, I don't want to hear about the game being over with 20 seconds left when we're down, you know, five goals. <laughs> we're going to score one, gosh darn it, maybe two. You notice Dwight Mullins is still out on the ice. Maybe he's got another one in his stick. Tried to get it to the hot hand, Dwight Mullen. Pollock sending it across. Allen plays it into the fire zone. Inside, 10 seconds to play. O'Donnell. Now Mullen. Mullins will shoot it and glove save to St. Pierre. And that finishes this one out. And for Fort Worth, not exactly what they wanted. A strong game last night against San Antonio. We showed you highlights of that earlier. Tonight, they really couldn't get the offense in sync, Paul. I think we're going to go ahead and have to say this was about fatigue tonight. Uh, you know, we can't be certain that it was, but it was a very physical game last night against the Iguanas in the home opener with 198 penalty minutes. So you can imagine, back-to-back -back games, the fire just not very crisp. They lose Terry Menard, who needs some plastic surgery, apparently cut across his eye. It's a, it's a tough night for the fire, a little out of sync, and it's just going to take a little time. Richard, Bob Delorimir gave up eight goals tonight. And as a goaltender, he can't be totally satisfied with his performance. But he did play well pretty early when the fire were ahead. Uh, your take on that? Well, things didn't even start out for him. He was introduced as Steve Plouffe to start the game. <laughs> so what are you going to do in that situation? But if you're Delorimere, you've got to put this behind you. Yes, you allowed the eight goals, but you've got to move on. He will get another chance to do something. Probably not Tuesday night against Oak City. You've got to think Steve Plouffe will be the goaltender there. But Bob Delorimere will have a chance to do something for the Fort Worth Fire. And
and he can come up big. He's just got to put this performance behind him. And the Fire have got to rest. Go home, get some sleep, limber up, and let's get ready for Oklahoma City and the Blazers on Tuesday night. Fort Worth Fire does play Oklahoma City on Tuesday. That game will not be on community cable television. However, the following Saturday's game against Tulsa, who spanked these Wichita Thunder last night, and the uh, revised Tulsa lineup, including Craig Cox and Doug Lawrence, always fan favorites here. We will have that game for you. They're also on the road Friday against San Antonio, then back here at home Saturday. And uh, be sure to watch that game in the next week on community cable. Well, we want to say thanks for watching tonight. The Fort Worth Fire putting on a show, not quite the result they wanted.